Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with my lovely wife. Maureen. And we're excited about sharing more about Grace. We want to encourage you to go to YouTube, check out all the programs that we have already done on this to topic of grace and bring understanding so you can start living by it. But like, share, and subscribe. We would yeah. appreciate yeah, Dr. all of you becoming a part of the family. Yeah, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson on the YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. And so I just really encourage you, this is my book, that God, when we both got a revelation of grace, God told us to write the book. So this was a book that God had me write, God's grace fuels your passion. Matter of fact, that's one of the scriptures in the word of the TPT Bible. And, and, oh, sure. uh, and Jesse Duplantis, uh, read the book and said it was the best book he's ever read on grace. This book and workbook both is good for your devotional time if you want, or if you want to have a Bible study in your home or in the church. Yes. The, the women's ministry wants to go through the book and the workbook. It's just powerful. Many churches have done the the, the book and the workbook Amen. and the women's ministry. That's a great home Bible study for yeah. folks but just to, encourage you with it. Yeah. Excuse and me. today we're talking more a little bit more about my book which Jesse DePlanis didn't say anything about, but it is Maximizing <laughs> Life in Grace. And I think he it's never a great book read your well. book. I know he never read my book, I'm but sorry. I haven't sent it to him. I need to send it to him. You need to send it to him. Amen. And so we want to talk to you more about grace and the power of grace and that you're saved by faith through grace. And uh, many times people uh, don't even know that they, when they got born again, they didn't know anything about how grace was as associated with salvation. I mean, might might have been led by... The, the Lord by the Roman road, and, and sometimes it leaves out the power of grace. The Bible says we're justified by faith through grace. So if you're justified, then we really need to understand that God has already, through Christ Jesus' blood, has paid for our past, present, and future, sets us in perfect position for all the promises of God. Isn't That's that exciting? That's, that that we true. ought to understand that. And today I'm going to share a little bit about how grace moves us closer to God. Grace actually moves you. There's a, a growth process well, yeah. in the kingdom of God. Yeah. There's a growing from salvation through the power of grace into more and more of the promises and more and more of the goodness of, of life. I, the ancient Hebrew kind of teaches it as the tree of life. Christ Jesus, the tree of life that was in the garden, they didn't choose the tree of life, Christ. But now we in the remade garden or New Testament, and the new covenant, we're set in a position that we can receive Christ, the tree of life in our lives. And in the tree of life in the ancient Hebrew, it talks about how grace is the crown power of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that salvation runs itself all the way from the power of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit by grace through Christ Jesus to salvation to us on this earth that has given us an opportunity to be born again and become children of God sons Amen. of God. Amen. How powerful that? that actually is. And so many people, if you have any indication or any belief system, any part of you that believes that God would hurt you in any fashion or way, you are going to struggle ever becoming close and growing up in Christ or growing up in God or growing up in the grace of God. Yes, so many have truth. wrong perceptions of who God is. God is good. Jesus said God was good. The power of grace is tied up in how God sent his name that our, we may take on his name and get born again. Even back in the Old Testament, you can look at it, how he, he added Yad or Ah or Father God. He added to Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham or A-H or Sarah to A-H, added to her name. He put their name under the Abrahamic covenant. We receive the names of God and all the goodness of God yes, in our do. lives as a result. And so how yeah. important. Now, when we receive Christ, and I want to use this scripture in John chapter 15, verse 7, 5 through 7, I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me abides and ab I abide in him. This is, this is really powerful, how critical it is to abide in him. And he, he bears much fruit. We have to understand, though, when it, Jesus is painting a, a picture to us that the branch uh, it, uh, is, it can do nothing on its own. 
And so when we are not connected to Christ Jesus, to the word, one with it, in agreement with it, then we can do nothing on our own. But when we're in agreement with the vine, we're born again in the kingdom of God. But the vine, the word of God, is what we're connected to, bonded to, knitted together in love, the Bible talks about, uh, uh, with all the saints, and he's the head and we're the body, that that vine, that life flows through us. That vine, and the, the vine is what produces the leaves and fruits of the fruit. And so we have to see that it's Christ in us that is productive. Paul says, I work harder than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God. So he's saying it's grace, it's Jesus, it's the vine, it's who the word is. The word is grace, is what works through my life. Without the word, yes, yes. we can do nothing. That's in essence what the yeah. scripture is is saying. Yeah. To so if by abiding has, uh, I, I trace it all the way back to the ancient Hebrew, but it, it means hope, faith, and love. Yeah. We are operating in abiding in Christ when we operate in hope, faith, and love. When, when we leave love or hope or faith, then we are not abiding in and operating in the full power of God. Well, even though Jesus continues to abide in us, he never leaves us. Yeah, and we know that the word says that faith, hope, and charity, love, will last forever. So that's eternal. And so what you're saying, and I hear, yes. is that first of all, faith worketh by love. So if you don't have love operating, God's unconditional love that was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit, and you surrender to that love, yes. then that love, then it activates the faith of God to now move in your life and move mountains and the faith of God to produce fruit in your life. And hope is the, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And so I find it really interesting. There's a scripture you use about hope. Romans yeah. 5, 5 says that, you know, this is the hope of God never disappoints us. There Our hope go. will, but his hope will never disappoint us because the love of God was shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because of the love. Because the love of God contains the hope of God. And, and that's what it means. And so the hope of God now is what faith, the Bible says faith, that's, uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 1 says faith, now faith is, it's right. now the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, evidence of things not yet seen. So hope, love, hope, and faith ha work all together. And what's important about them, and, and you, you started with it there, hope, it, it needs to be the hope of God, not your hope. Yeah. It needs to be the faith of God and not your faith. Nope. It needs to be the love of God and not your love, because those are corruptible seeds, but there's an incorruptible seed when it comes from Father God. He's yeah. the source of power in your life. Yes. And so when it's you- It's eternal. Uh, it's eternal and it's unconditional. That's the truth. Oh, it's wonderful. It's absolutely awesome. So abiding. Now, let me see if I can paint the picture. If you would just go back to uh, uh, those Israelites when they were set free yeah. from Egypt, uh, they were set free by grace because they were undeserving of what God did for them. And in the 10th plague, there was the blood that was applied. This became the picture of the cross and the price that Jesus would pay. The blood of the lamb was placed on the top, on the right, and on the left of That's the doorposts. Now, this is grace. This is the crown power of grace, power, crown, crown power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is where the power flows down the tree. Jesus is the vine. Yes. And it's planted and draws living water. This is actually a picture of where the church is and where Jesus the Christ, upon this rock I will build my church. Yeah. This vine is 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 pulling the word of God that's preached in the church yeah. and you're planted in the church, you're drawing living water into the vine. Yeah. And what's interesting about a tree, you ever thought about sap? I used to do uh, make maple syrup. Yeah. And I used to tap the tree and, and get some of the sap out. 
but sap actually flows up a tree, anti-gravity. Yeah. That's a miracle in itself. So this is the picture of the power in the yeah. living water that flows up to the branch, and you are the branch, Jesus is the vine, and you can produce no fruit except it comes from the vine. Yes, but it all starts with the roots. Yes. The roots are what pulls the, the nutrition out of the soil. The roots is what uh, that pulls the water and all that it needs. It comes from the roots that comes into the soil. And so the roots are, 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 are I love. The Bible says being rooted and, and grounded, grounded in love. The love well, of Christ. I just told the whole story. I the love whole, that. The love of Christ. So it starts with love. So when I walk in God's love and choose His love, choose to forgive, choose to not be offended, choose to have a God's image about somebody and not the behavior that you're seeing them in, but seeing what God says they should look like and, and begin to build a whole story around that image and have mercy and not judgment, then then you're not all. Oh, so th things are happening here. This Come is on, love because I'm choosing to see it the way God sees it. And so when I do that, I've entered into the hope of God for, for them and for myself that I have the right image because the Bible says, you know, out of a, uh, out of a bad tree comes bad things. And out of a good tree comes good things. So out of our heart. Yes. Okay. So I want good things come out of my heart. So I want to have the right image of Father God for his creation, for the people he's made. And out of that image, I'm in the hope of God, his promise for them, because hope is his promise that cannot fail. That's what the word says in Hebrews chapter six, that hope is God made a a promise to us and a vow, and he made it to us, that covenant yes. uh, uh, with Christ Jesus, and we're in Christ Jesus, but he made it with them. And he said that, you know, a mediator, there's usually two, but, but God says he made it all by himself. And so we take this covenant, and it says that in this covenant, he blessed us, multiplies us, and, and he did, did this so that we would have no doubt, no unbelief, and we would know that he doesn't change, and we would know that he doesn't lie. And so Amen. that's hope. There you go. That's the hope of God and that his is. promise. That's the hope that is unshakable. It's a and hope that cannot, it's an anchor that cannot be broken. Ooh, and that good. is what it yeah. is. So when I choose to put my roots into the love of God, now I enter love into the truth, hope of the God. Word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, his love, then hope happens. And when hope happens, faith happens. And power begins to done. flow Up to, to you, to the yeah. branch, yeah. to like, produce fruit. Without that flow, you can produce no good fruit. That's right, that's right. That, that is, I mean, it's just, it's, it is absolutely, to get a hold of hope, faith, and charity. I think that was uh, Dale Evans many years ago. <laughs> hope, faith, and charity. That's the I way like to live successfully. I like that song. How do I know the Bible? Tell well, anyway, so when you think about it, so I want you to get, go back just for a moment and realize that grace is at the crown power of the tree of life. Jesus is the crown power of the tree of life. Jesus is the tree of life. And you see the cross in it. You see the flow through the Son, the Father and Holy Spirit, and you see the cross is made, that all of this takes place. Grace takes place from that doorpost. They were set free by the blood to leave bondage or the law and enter into the promises of God, but they struggled with letting go and receiving the grace of God and take the land. But the image inside they of them. They had terrible images. They saw themselves as slaves. Yes. That was the image. So the what you see inside, and that's what uh, it's so important in our life when we come into the new covenant. We have the power to step into the supernatural realm and see things the way God sees it, according to His Word, and produce the right images. And so, in their heart, the image was slave, and that was the image they saw themselves as slaves. So they couldn't go into the promised land because they could not see themselves. That's right. Uh, as in the grace of God. It was a picture. 
picture. The, the going into the promised land was going into the kingdom of God, living into the promises. There you go. And, and though they got free by the blood, blood of the lamb was a picture of getting free of the blood by the blood of Jesus. And, and they went through the wilderness, but now we don't go through the wilderness because Jesus paid, went in the wilderness and paid the price for the wilderness and set us free. So we go right into the kingdom of God. And so, there but you go. they couldn't go into the kingdom of God because the image inside Wrong of them was slave. Hearts. Ooh. And they lived in the natural realm. They did not enter into the supernatural realm of God, the promised land, because he already told them it was a land flowing with milk and honey. That's right. He already said that, that he'd given them this land, but they did not see that. They saw the giants. They saw the natural realm. That's right. They didn't see what God said. They saw themselves still as slaves. They couldn't get in. That is beautiful. And so then this, that's, that, that's, I love that. That's the image. He who abides in me image. and I in him, in him, research from the ancient Hebrew, going back from the Greek all the way to the ancient Hebrew, it means being planted in the church for which he died. Upon this rock I build my church. He died for it. Because now we become the temple. We are the temple of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we want to make sure that we are planted in the house so we receive this living water that causes us to grow in Christ or grow in the anointing or grow in the promises or grow in the goodness of God. Please understand this. Everything that God has ever done for us has been done and it is already finished. So don't think that you're like growing a new garden. It's already in you, but you are now moving in a spiritual realm deeper and deeper into God, even though it sounds like up. It's just deeper and deeper into the goodness of God and receiving more and more from what's already done by faith. You can receive it into the natural. That's the process of what I, when I yeah. talk about growing in the tree of life. Yeah, and when you're saying this, I'd like to add this to your, about the church. Because a lot of times people are like, well, the church, you know. No, the church is vital for your growth growth into maturity and to become a matured Christian. And the Bible says when you're planted in the house of the Lord, the gates of hell can't come can't against you. Day. Come on, plant yes. gates of hell. If people could get that. Can't come against you because you pull on the anointing of the church, the corporate anointing. And so, but this is the whole thing is that the Bible talks in Hebrews chapter 4, 11 about the fivefold ministry. And, but it says that this is what it's to do. For people, it is to prepare you for the works of service together. It is to bring you into unity of faith. Well, who are you going to be in unity of faith with? With the body of Christ in the church. It's to bring you into maturity and unity of faith and, and the knowledge of the Son of God and that you might be matured now. So it causes you to grow up and become matured. There you when go. You that's, learn, that's called generativity. Yeah, that's, that's the, what, what happens. Because when you're in the, the church, growth. that, uh, you know, that people can rub you the wrong way. Well, you didn't even know you had that problem in your life. That's right. But now it's time to get rid of that thing. It's trying to learn to be victorious and that you're building. The church is a this place is where overcome. we build yes. and we grow in the love of God. So we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the cunning and craftiness of, of men. And so the church is vital for our growth. Who I am today, which I like who I am today, but it was because of the church that, that did that. If That's there right. was something that shouldn't be in my life, the church seemed to find it. <laughs> exactly. And it's time to, and the Holy Spirit then leads you to truth and yeah. you can find out what you need to change so that you can get Didn't along. Didn't even know you had that. So that you can overcome that situation yeah, and love that person get, anyway. Yeah. And then you get victorious because you've grown in the love you of have God. You've grown. And, and when God, you're grown, in you're the grown divine in, nature of God. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Grown into the ability divine to receive nature the promises of God. Of everything. You All the of promises. it's good. Yes. No, I love it. I and love we're it. to be knitted together in love. And the Bible talks about this in one translation, being knitted together in love. And that by that, you have access to all the riches of God. And that is Amen. the revelation of the knowledge of the mysteries of Christ. 
Oh hey. my goodness. Oh my gosh, it's just. But it takes being in church, where being with the people, being under the anointing, being where God's name dwells. Then just take all we just talked about here yeah. and take it to this scripture okay, let's see. that, that it, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, we're trying to tell you this is God's way. Don't, don't choose your way. You don't need, think you need the church or you can sit on the couch and watch TV. No, no, don't, don't choose your way because that's not the way. The way is God's way. He gave us the church. It is, there's been a tabernacle, a temporary tent tab all through history. So everybody there is wrong and you're right. No, you're wrong. You got to be planted in the house of God where the word of God is preached. There is no other way you can't escape it. Even in Genesis, right in the second chapter of Genesis, he handmade man out of the dust of the ground, gave him a living soul. He was already made male and female in his likeness and image, but he planted them in a garden, which is the family, and he put the garden in Eden, which is the church, right from the foundation. And there's a hedge of protection around the Holman family when it operates correctly, and there's a hedge of protection around the church, and the gates of hell will not prevail in your life if you get planted in the church. I don't know how to tell it to you any other way, but we've lived our life planted in a church. Yes. Continually and say, learning and growing in the Word of God and growing well, in family. Christ. And you'll say, but I've been hurt in church. Well, who hasn't? whoop de yes, do Yes, there's people in there. There's family. Oh, there's we're people fa in there. Yeah, we're family. Yeah. Well, and family, brothers and sisters squabble. Well, church is flesh. made up of your brothers and sisters. So that's just normal. The problem is they all brought their flesh. Yeah, but, but, but really, we just have to learn... <laughs> to get free of what's in us that that person, you know, is rubbing us the wrong way. Iron sharpens iron. And going to the Holy Ghost and learning how to overcome when you're in the house of the Lord. But you never bring the problems to your children. Never, never, never. You tell them how wonderful God's house is, how wonderful people are, how much we love Jesus, how great it is to serve our God. And so you always, because grace is eternal encouragement. So you have, so you've got to be that voice of eternal encouragement to your children. That's it. Don't, don't, they can't sort that stuff out. And so and as I'm children. I'm going to tell you what, we got the fruit. We got so the fruit. So I can fruit. tell you this and I don't feel bad about it because my two sons took over our church, 15,000 people. It, they are blowing it up. My grandchildren are already leading worship already running children's church, yeah. already running uh, youth ministry, already running television ministry, already actively performing in the kingdom of God. So we have the fruit. And because not, and They've why? been planted in the church, growing in the word consistently in Christ our whole lives. Because grace is what? Since we were 27. And what is grace? Grace is, et is eternal. What is it? It is eternal encouragement and hope, good hope, God hope. And let it encourage your heart, strengthen you for every good work and every good deed. And so it's really important to me and, and uh, that I brought, I brought eternal encouragement, grace, grace, grace to my yes. children about grace, God grace, and how great it is to be in to the house. Grace, grace, yeah, great yeah. to your children. Grace. Yeah, how great grace. it is to serve in God's how, house. How great God, great God is, is, the protection it is, and how that you have to stay in church. Because your children, you know, the world out there will grab your kids. Well, you need to be in the house of the Lord. They need to hear the word. They need to be under that corporate anointing. They, they must be that way or you're giving your heritage to the devil. And you then are. You, then you lose you, your legacy. And it's you're gone. losing your legacy. But then you make sure that you make it fun in the house of the Lord. You never abuse your children. We are four generations house. deep yeah. in the house of God. That's right. Amen. And I want, I want to just say, how do you grow up the tree of life? And you'd have to get the book to hear yeah. all the details. I don't have time to get into it today. But just to say that it is all surrounding your favorite word, it's surrounded by giving. And giving, you can give financially, yes, but you have to give love. You have to give grace. You have to give encouragement. Everything God said, let every action on this earth benefit others. 
do you have true concern for others Amen. more than yourself? Amen. This is part of the wisdom yeah. of God. So when people talk about the offering, they talk about the tithe, they talk about... Get excited. Get excited because you're going to move into more and more of God in a deeper and deeper walk, not based on your behavior, but based on your heart, the desires to give, build a kingdom, change other people's lives, reach other people for Christ. And when you do whatever the church is doing, whatever Word for Winners is doing, if you become a partner with us, whatever we do, you are there. Mm -hmm. You become part of something that you couldn't do on your own, but you can be part of what God has sent us to do, what the church is doing nationwide, what the church is doing all over the world, what the church is doing, bringing salvation, you become part of it because you have invested of yourself in it. In the house of the Lord. And if you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior, don't want to talk about religion, but this is your opportunity. Just pray this prayer with me, repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. Me I ask you, dear sins. Jesus, dear come Jesus, into my life, come into, into my, my heart, life, be my Lord my and my, my Savior. Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And because amen. you prayed that, I believe something's happened in your heart. You're never going to be the same. Let somebody know you just received Jesus amen. today. And you're not going to become religion and don't go down religious paths. Amen. Go with the truth and the Word of God amen. and not man-made rules and laws. Yes, and we're really excited about that. If you got blessed today by the message, you know, uh, financially, uh, give into it and bless this ministry that it can bless others and go all over the world that God wants to happen. And so I really encourage you, uh, go to our webpage and learn all about our ministry, what we do and be able to see our product that's there and become a part of what we are doing to cover the earth Amen. with the word of grace and truth. And go to, if you wanna hear more of our teachings on grace and other teachings that we have, go to our YouTube. Dr. C. Thomas Anderson, like, share. like it, share, and, and subscribe. subscribe. We would love that. And so we need you. We need you. Yes, Be we do. Absolutely awesome. And remember this one last thought God can only get to you what he can get through you. Praise God. We That's love fun. you. Have a see great you next time. day. God, God bless, bless you. you. Are you ready to see more of the grace of God in your life? In the workbook, God's Grace Fuels My Passion, Dr. Maureen Anderson goes into an in-depth study of the life of grace and what that means. The law binds you, but grace brings you freedom. This book paints a picture of what grace truly is. Through personal testimonies, this is a life-changing revelation that God wants for you. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.